Hello everyone, I am Dr. Shweta Yadav, Assistant Professor of Zoology, Dayal Singh College, Karnal. I welcome you all to this lecture series for the undergraduate students of zoology being organized under the ages of the Directorate of Higher Education, Haryana. The topic for today's lecture is Cell Reproduction to Meiosis. It is in continuation of the previous lecture, Cell Reproduction 1, Cell Cycle and Mitosis. This topic is from the syllabus of Class BSc Semester 1, Subject Zoology, Paper 2. I hope you find this lecture informative and interesting. After this lecture, you will be able to define meiosis, identify and explain the different phases of meiosis, understand the significance of meiosis and differentiate between the different types of meiosis. Now, before discussing the steps in meiosis, let us discuss some basic points about it like what is meiosis, who discovered the phenomena and in what kind of cells does it occur. Meiosis, as you may have already known, is a special type of cell division in which the chromosomes duplicate only once but the cell divides twice. Therefore, one parent cell produces four cells each having half the number amount number of chromosomes and half the amount of DNA and due to this reduction it is also known as reductional division. So let us discuss some meiosis facts. Meiosis was first discovered by and described by German biologist Oskar Hertwig in the year 1876. Then afterwards, it was discovered uh, described by Belgian zoologist Edward von Benden in 1883 at chromosomal level. The term meiosis was coined by Farmer and Moore in the year 1905 from the Greek word meum, which means to reduce. Meiosis occurs only in some very special cells and for some specific periods only. This includes spermatocytes, oocytes, microsporocytes and megasporocytes. It occurs only in diploid cells and not in haploid ones. Now, let us study the different phases of meiosis. Unlike mitosis, in meiosis, the cell divides twice to give rise to four daughter cells. These divisions are known as meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Both these divisions are further categorized into karyokinesis and cytokinesis, that is nuclear division and cytokinesis, which is the division of the cell. The first division is meiosis 1. It is also known as reductional or heterotypical division as the chromosome number is halved in this phase. In meiosis 1, karyokinesis is divided into four phases, prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, which is then followed by cytokinesis 1. Now, let us study these stages in detail. Prophase 1. It is of the longest duration, even longer than that of mitosis. It is about 100 to 200 times longer than the prophase of mitosis. Prophase of meiosis 1 is further divided into 5 substages which are leptotene, zygotene, pachytene, diplotene and 
diakinesis. The first of these stages is leptotene or leptonema. It is also called thin threaded stage as the chromosome chromatin is not condensed into chromosomes yet or also the bouquet stage as the end of the chromosomes are directed towards a small area on one side of the nucleus so forming a bouquet like structure. Here the volume of the nucleus starts increasing. Formation of esters takes place in this stage. The nuclear chromatin begins to condense into chromosomes. The chromosomes develop a number of major coils which grow in size as the prophase proceeds further. Now leptotene is followed by zygotene or zygonema which is also called as yoked threaded stage as the pairing of homologous chromosomes to form bivalent takes place known as synapsis or syndesis. It is also known as the pair syndesis. This pairing takes place due to the formation of a nucleoprotein complex known as the synaptonemal complex between the two homologous chromosomes. As you can see here that this black part is the synaptonemal complex and these kind of synaptonemal complexes attach the homologous chromosomes together. The pair, this pairing happens in a zipper fashion and depending upon the direction of pairing it can be of three types. The first is proterminal and is when pairing proceeds from chromosome end towards the center. Then there is procentric where the pairing begins at the center and extends towards the end. And then there is the intermediate kind in which there is no specific or particular starting point for the pairing. In zygotene, esters keep moving apart and the chromosomes are condensed further. Now after zygotene, the next stage is pachytene or pachynema. This stage is also known as the thick threaded stage as there is further condensation of the chromosomes. The chromosomes are now seen can be seen as dyads or the two sister chromatids which are attached to one centromere or the tetrads where four chromatids are aligned together due to the synaptonemal complex. The size of nucleus is maximum in the stage. Chiasma formation begins in late pachytene in which exchange of genes or crossing over between two non-sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes now the moving away of ester also continues next is the diplotene or diplonema stage which is also known as double threaded stage it is of the longest duration as well as the most active subphase of the prophase 1. Here the nuclear membrane and nucleolus starts disappearing. Desynapses or the separation of homologous chromosomes begin due to the dissolution of synaptonemal complex except for the chiasmata. Now the terminalization of chiasmata begins as they start moving towards the end of the chromosomes. The fifth and the last subphase of the prophase 1 is diakinesis. In this stage, the terminalization of the chiasmata is completed. As here you can see that this chiasma is moving towards the end, and with this, almost all the chiasmata will move towards the end of the chromosomes. There is the complete disappearance of nucleolus and nuclear envelope. And ju just like mitosis, 
the spindle formation also begins. Now the bivalents are irregularly and freely scattered in the nucleocytoplasmic matrix. With this the prophase 1 comes to an end. Now during metaphase 1 the bivalents are independently oriented and arranged on two imaginary parallel metaphase plates or equatorial planes. You can see in the diagram that the blue and the red chromosomes are assorted independently. It's not all blue on one side and all red on other side. The assortment is independent whether the chromosome is blue or red. The centromeres of the homologous chromosomes lie equidistant from the equator. Since there are two layers of the chromosomes forming, none of them is exactly on the equator. They are lying equidistant from the equator. Both the kinetochores of each homologous chromosomes are attached to the spindle fiber of one side only. That means the chromosome will move toward a pole without the breaking of centromere. Here you can see that in a pair of homologous chromosomes, one chromosome is attached to one pole and the other chromosome is attached to the other pole and the sister chromatids are moving towards the same pole. Therefore, the homologous chromosomes will separate and not the sister chromatids. Proteinaceous interzonal fiber develops between the centromere of the homologous chromosomes. It will happen somewhere here and this will push the chromosomes further apart and this is unlike mitosis where this proteinaceous interzonal fiber develops between the sister chromatids and not homologous chromosomes. Now metaphase 1 is followed by anaphase 1. In anaphase 1 what happens is that the homologous chromosomes separate. So now the tetrad is divided into two dyads. The homologous chromosomes now move to opposite ends of the cell. There is a reduction in chromosome number as half of the chromosomes reach each pole. The chromosomes may be of V, J or rod shape according to the position of the centromere. This supports Mendel's law of segregation as alleles of the same gene are separated into daughter nuclei. Shorter chromosomes with terminal chiasma separate faster than longer chromosome with interstitial chiasmata. Now this is very easy to understand because if chromosome are short and the chiasma are at end they will move faster and separate quickly but if in a long chromosome the chiasmata is in between it will take a longer time to move towards the terminal end. Now moving further towards telophase 1 and cytokinesis 1. These phases may or may not occur as these are absent in trillium and some insects eggs where the chromosome passes from anaphase 1 to directly to metaphase 2. So when telophase 1 is present, a daughter nucleus will with new nuclear envelope and nucleolus appears at each pole. The astral and spindle fibers are absorbed in the cytoplasm. The chromosomes start to unwind and elongate into chromatins. You can clearly see from earlier diagrams these chromosomes are now longer and nuclear envelope has start to reappear. The centromeres are reformed with the help of centrosphere. You can see it clearly here. In cytokinesis, the cleavage firmware is formed in animal cells which is visible here whereas in plant cells there is a cell plate formation which result in the formation of two daughter cells. With this the meiosis 1 part comes to an end and the two daughter nuclei now proceed with meiosis 2. 
meiosis 2 is the second meiotic division which is also known as equational or homotypical division because the chromosome number remains the same as after meiosis 1. It is also divided into two parts karyokinesis and cytokinesis where karyokinesis is further divided into four phases prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. Now prophase 2 involves the formation of esters from centriole. Again the chromatin condenses into chromosomes. The nucleolus and nuclear envelope start to disappear again. Achromatic bipolar spindle formation begins perpendicular to that of prophase 1. Now keep in mind that earlier the two cells, uh, one single cell of pro, uh, in prophase 1 divided into two cells and these two cells are now lying next to each other. So the spindle formation is perpendicular to that which happened in prophase 1 so that it will be uh, not in prophase 1 the spindle formation was like this vertically now it will happen horizontally in both the cells. So now we move to the metaphase 2. In metaphase 2 the centromeres are pulled towards the opposite ends as the kinetochores or are attached to the spindles from both the sides. Now you can see in this one chromosome the kinetochore of this sister chromatid is attached to this spindle and the kinetic core of this sister chromatid is attached to this spindle. Due to this, chromosomes are arranged on metaphase plate or equatorial plane as you can clearly see in the image. The centromeres lie at the equator while the arms are directed towards the poles. Chromosomes are highly condensed and then we enter into the anaphase 2. In this phase, the chromosomes break at the centromere due to which the sister chromatids separate and form daughter chromosomes. Proteinaceous interzonal fibers develop between the daughter cells, daughter chromosomes and push them away from each other just like in mitosis. Thus, daughter chromosomes move to the opposite ends of the cell. They may be of V, J or rod shape depending upon the shape of the chromosome or position of the centromere just like in anaphase of mitosis. Maximal condensation is seen in this stage. Now moving to telophase and 2 and cytokinesis 2. These are always present and involve changes opposite to prophase 2. Here the cell elongation continues due to spindle stretching. New nuclear envelopes and nucleoli are reformed at both the poles. Chromosomes unwind into chromatin again. Now again the chromosomes have elongated nucleus nuclear envelope is regenerating astral and spindle fibers are absorbed already into the cytoplasm and centrosomes are forming again by addition of centrosphere and centrioles into centrioles and during cytokinesis 2 again a cleavage furrow is formed which results in the formation of daughter cells from the parent cells. Ultimately four daughter cells, four haploid daughter nuclei and cells are formed from one diploid cell. This concludes the process of meiosis. Now one may ask what is the need of meiosis when a much simpler process of mitosis already exists? Why did meiosis evolve? What is the significance of meiosis? Well, mitosis is a crucial process for growth, development, regeneration and sexual, asexual reproduction. Meiosis plays a 
key role in sexual reproduction. It produces haploid gametes or spores from diploid cells. So meiosis is antithesis to fertilization and in this way it helps in the maintenance of constant chromosome number in sexually reproducing organisms generation after generation because fertilization doubles the number of chromosome uh, doubles the amount of dna in any organism and meiosis reduces it to half this way due to fertilization the uh, dna content does not become 4n or due to meiosis only the dna content does not become only n in any organism meiosis produces new combinations of genes due to crossing over and chance arrangement of bivalents at equator which leads to evolution and improvement of different races of plants and animals it also proves the interrelationship between living organisms uh, why because its details are basically similar in all sexually reproducing organisms that's why we can see that we have evolved together chromosomal and genomic mutations caused by non disjunction result in variations which are useful for breeders who propagate these variations using artificial selection now variation occur in mitosis also but meiosis has a larger number of variation because of recombination happening during crossing over independent assortment and non disjunction so the rate of changes is higher or variation is higher in meiosis as compared to mitosis finally it also helps in multiplication as one cell gives rise to four daughter cells now let us discuss in brief the three main types of meiosis on the basis of period and site of occurrence meiosis is of three types first is gametic or terminal meiosis in this kind the diploid individuals form haploid gametes by meiosis during gametogenesis in gonads these haploid gametes fuse to form diploid a diploid zygote this diploid zygote again undergoes mitosis to form a diploid adult this kind of life cycle is known as diplontic adult is diploid and shows gametic meiosis and it is found in animals all animals except protozoans the next type is zygotic or initial mitosis uh, meiosis in this kind of my, uh, meiosis a haploid individual forms haploid gametes by mitosis and these haploid gametes fuse and form a diploid zygote which undergoes meiosis followed by a mitotic division to form a haploid adult this kind of life cycle is known as haplontic life cycle because the adult is haploid and shows zygotic meiosis this kind of life cycle is found in different kinds of algae fungi bryophytes and protozoans there is another kind of meiosis which is known as sporogenetic meiosis it is characterized by a diploid sporocyte or spore mother cell of sporophytic plant which undergoes meiosis to form the haploid spores in sporangia these haploid spores germinate to form haploid gametophyte which further produces a hap produces haploid gametes by mitosis these haploid gametes fuse to form a diploid zygote which undergoes mitotic divisions to produce a diploid sporophyte 
such type of meiosis is found in higher plants like pteridophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms out of all these diplontic life cycle or zygote uh, gametic meiosis is advantageous because it introduces variation at the time of gamete formation as well as fertilization now moving further with this we have come to the end of our lecture on meiosis as well as on the topic of cell reproduction so to sum up this session let us revise the main points of this lecture we have learned about the phenomena of meiosis which is in which one diploid cell undergoes two divisions to give rise to four haploid daughter cells then we discussed the different stages of meiosis where in meiosis 1 the number of chromosomes was halved and the dna content was halved in meiosis 2 we also discuss what are the synaptonemal complex chiasmata and terminalization after that we focused on the significance of meiosis and its role in the maintenance of chromosome number in sexually reproducing organism while introducing variations as well finally we discussed the three main types of meiosis in brief and how it plays a role in sexual reproduction in both diploid and haploid organisms i hope you were able to understand these concepts clearly now here is a list of some books if you wish to further explore this topic thank you for listening keep learning